But let me say to you tonight that whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for the building of humanity, it has dignity and it has worth. You're listening to a rankandfile.ca podcast. Rankandfile.ca is a website dedicated to providing labor news and analysis for rebuilding trade unions and the workers' movement from below. Welcome to another rankandfile.ca podcast. In December 2013, without warning either the public or the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, the management of Canada Post announced it would be ending home delivery for 5 million Canadians, increasing service costs and cutting 8,000 jobs over the next five years. Polls show a majority oppose the cuts, and grassroots campaigns are emerging in small towns and big cities across Canada. On January 6, 2014, we interviewed Arlen Doran about the campaign that has started in Winnipeg. Arlen is a Winnipeg postal worker and a member of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers Local 836, representing 1,500 Canada Post workers in Winnipeg and southwestern Manitoba. What was the campaigning like on Saturday, and why did you target the old San Vital neighborhood? Okay, yeah, so uh, what we did is we got 25 and 30 people together on Saturday. We met at uh, the Forks Market, which is, um, it's like a park we have in Winnipeg, right in the heart of Winnipeg, uh, where the the uh, Red River and Assiniboine River meet, so quite a historic site for us um, as a meeting place. So we met there, and um, about... 17 of us left from there and went to deliver a package of information to the Old St. Vitale area. And uh, the reason we picked the Old St. Vitale area is because it's right in the heart of Shelley Glover's riding. And Shelley Glover is now, she's a cabinet minister for the Conservatives and she's just been selected as the heritage minister by Stephen Harper. So she was all she was also the one that was seen in the House of Commons high fiving other MPs when uh, they pushed our back to work legislation through. So we figured we'd we'd uh, go go uh, deliver in her riding first. So of those people that went to deliver, what we delivered was um, a window sign that says Canada Post, I'm for door to door with uh, some information on the back of it. We also delivered uh, a pamphlet with some information exposing the truth um, and some of the uh, false claims Canada Post is making. And uh, thirdly was a letter, protest letter that people could send to their member of parliament just by signing it and uh, sticking it in a mail without any postage, because you can do that right now. <laughs> what was the public response like? Uh, well, the, the, everybody was um, really positive for, uh, towards what we are doing. Um, aside from the 17 people that went delivering, uh, we also had about 12 to 15 that stayed at the Forks Market, and... Uh, walked around and um, collected signatures on petition. So uh, the response to them was, um, there was a lot of disbelief that this is actually being touted to, as to happening. Um, people saying it's poorly planned, um, it's too much, um, it will kill the post office, um, especially uh, elderly people were worried about uh, losing the door-to-door delivery. Um, outside, there wasn't too many people because it was minus 37 or 36 and uh, it had just snowed like a foot <laughs> the day before. So the only people that were out were shoveling. And uh, What I heard from those people that did talk to some people outside was uh, they were very supportive of, uh, of what we were doing. And... Um, didn't want to lose their door-to-door delivery. With the service cuts and cost increases and the 8,000 planned layoffs, there's the argument that this is laying the groundwork for privatization. Do you agree with this? Uh, I most definitely would agree on that. Um, if, if it isn't laying the work, 
the groundwork for privatization. It's the most asinine business plan I've ever heard. Um, I've, ta- I've been, I've done a year of business school, and I've never heard of a successful business model where you reduce your service and you increase your prices to to be sustainable. That's it's just a recipe for disaster. They're they're trying to drive it into the ground, so then they can sell it off for a piece for a song and uh, just do exactly what happened in the United Kingdom, was it last year? Yeah. Or, uh, they sold it for a song, put it on the market, and people made boatloads of money in less than 24 hours on it. Have both the workers and management at Canada Post been paying attention to what happened at Royal Mail in Britain? Uh, as far as I know, yeah, postal workers have, uh, yeah, because... Um, not only just because it's another postal system that we're watching, but our previous CEO, Moya Green, was um, before, that was our CEO before Deepak Chopra, was actually the CEO of Royal Mail when it was, um, she privatized it. So she went over there with the express, um, the express plan to privatize Royal Mail, and that's exactly what she did, so... Um, yeah, people were pretty interested in it, uh, if not only for that fact, just to see what she was going to do after she left Canada the post. And Chopra himself has connections to the Conference Board of Canada, which is pro-privatization, right? Yeah, and he also has uh, tight connections because his previous employer was Pitney Bowes, which is the largest private mail um, retailer in the world. So what Pitney Bowes does and what they're doing now actually in the States is they're lobbying hard to get um, the American government to sell off their postal system because once it's sold off and pieced out, Pitney Bowes comes in and they swoop up and they pick up the pieces and uh, make serious money off of it. So. So if people want to privatize it, there's obviously profit to be had with Canada Post. For sure, there's there's profit to be had and uh, all you have to do is look at last 17 years of their financial statements. It's it's amazing that Canada Post is coming out and saying that that the corporation is losing so much money when they can they would only be able to point to one year in the last 17 where they lost money and that year was the year that they locked out their workers. So and they also had to pay a uh, $200 million plus lawsuit for pay equity that they have dragged out in the courts since the early 80s. So that's the only way that they lost money. And then they're, they're saying, even the Conference Board of Canada report said that in 2012 they were projected to lose money and they actually made $120 million. So um, even his own Conference Board is uh, trying to skew, skew the public's knowledge, which is working. <laughs> People think that the post office is losing money out there. They do until they're told the real story. And that's part of the problem with this is mainstream media picks up a news release and just reports it. They don't even look into it, which is um, misleading a lot of the public. And it just takes a simple search on their website to find that they, in fact, are not losing money and they're, in fact, making money. And they will make money again this year. Canada Post management is also saying that there is a pension crisis looming because the plan is underfunded by over $6 billion. Yet, Canada Post recently had a four-year reprieve on funding the pension plan, during which time they invested about $2 billion in a new machinery to sort letters, even though letter volume is actually declining. declining. Can you clarify what the issue is here with pensions? Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is the new angle of Canada Post is to say that all these changes need to be done because our pension is in trouble, um, which I don't know why a CEO that makes a half a million dollars a year would really care about our pension, but he says he does, And um, but what it, it, what it really amounts to is our pension has a solvency, it, it's basically a paper test, a solvency deficit of 26%. So, in other words, if Canada Post was to go to business tomorrow, every single person in the pension plan would only get like 75% of what they put into it, um, which is ridiculous because most other pension plans, private pension plans, etc., don't have to 
run by the rules that the federal government has put in place for Crown Corporations, which is you must have a fully funded pension plan. Meaning, if you went out of business tomorrow, everybody's everybody's um, money you would get to them. The pension plan has no problem paying people that it, it, that are retired right now whatsoever, um, and in fact. Um, an increase of one to two percent in the base interest rate, it would it would virtually take care of itself, um, just because in, interest rates are so so low right now, and a lot of a lot of um, pension plans when the market was crashing went into bond yields and uh, safer investments for obvious reasons, so they wouldn't lose a boatload of money. Um, and those those interest rates are rock bottom right now. So um, it does have that's one of, part of the reason of having uh, deficit. The other part is that you're right. The Canadian government, Conservative government, and I believe it was in 2008, gave Canada Post four year holiday on making uh, special pension payments, meaning that like, because they're obligated to make any shortfall payments up. Um, and when the market crashed in 2008, there was obviously, um, obviously to protect the company from having to make $1 billion payments, whatever, every three months or whatever, whatever they lost, they gave them a holiday on that. They just recently gave them another four year holiday on that. And that was announced, I believe, a day or two before they announced that they were going to uh, get rid of door-to-door delivery. In CBC coverage of the campaigning in Winnipeg, you were quoted talking about alternatives that could actually improve and expand services while staying financially sound. What are those alternatives? Yeah, well, there's there's any number of uh, things that Canada Post can do. We have the largest retail network in Canada. We go to every house every day. Um, no other company in the country that does that. So um, there's ton, there's tons of things you could do, um, especially if you look at like the weather that's happening in Winnipeg right now at minus 50. People don't want to go outside, and some people can't go outside, right? So um, a, a national delivery company that you could phone up for same-day courier service um, would be excellent for for elderly or disabled people or people that just with young kids that like I don't know if you have young kids but I had two two that are a year and a half apart and to go outside when it's this cold is like an hour ordeal just to get out the door so you could um, easily a same day courier company like could um, you could pick up groceries for people you could do whatever they need their medication those type of things. I think that's a huge industry that we could tap into. There's also other postal administrations across the world and have um, entered into postal banking, which is a public banking service um, in a post office. So you would walk into your post office and there would be a banking counter in there as well where you could um, open a savings account, checking account. Um, you, well, the sky's the limit. So you, you could have offer full banking services on your own and places such as France and uh, the Kiwi Bank in New Zealand are the bulk of the profits of the postal services now coming from postal banking. That seems like a good idea for low income and poor people who have to rely on rip-off places like payday loans or for people in rural areas who don't have bank branches nearby. For sure and and, and we all know like um, all of us that are living paycheck to paycheck, a lot of banks, when you have a check, they hold it for seven days or something like that. And like to some people, that's just, that can't happen. So they, they, what they do is they go to these predatory lenders that take uh, serious interest rates and uh, fees off them just so they can get their money. And, and sometimes you go to banks and they do this with paychecks. Some banks cash your paycheck for you unless you, if, 
if your credit rating is up to snuff. So this is an industry where we could not only compete in, but we could hopefully get rid of the predatory banking industry altogether because giving somebody an option where that doesn't need to happen um, would be good for a large segment of Canadians, that's for sure. So what sort of steps are you taking in Winnipeg, and what do you think needs to be done across the country to take on and defeat these changes at Canada Post? Well, um, the first thing that we're in Winnipeg, um, what we've been speaking about is to truly defeat these changes, the Harbour government needs to be defeated in the next election. So um, we need to we need to link the Harbour government to this decision. Um, even though they're trying to keep themselves as far away from it as possible. Um, we're positive that this, this is almost deja vu for postal workers from the late 80s, early 90s, when Brian Mulroney, at the end of his reign, tried to completely sell off every, close every public post office except for four or five of them in the country. And... Uh, the fight back that ensued from postal workers and the public um, opinion basically stank him as he was relished to two seats in the house. So that's number one. We have to make that connection in the public to um, save your postal system, get rid of the Harvard government. Um, number two, what we need to do is we need to get the truth out there to the public because there is a lot of myths information out there um, that is being reported in the media that is just false, such as I've, also, I've heard on CBC or other stations that the post office is slated to lose a billion dollars next year, which is inherently false. Um, the post office actually had their best December in their rec a record December this year and um, is, is on target to so we have more office than they did last year at 100 or $129 million. So that's the next thing that we're doing. And to do that, you need to get out in the streets and you need to talk to people and you need to talk to them in every venue you can. Um, another important thing that we're going to do in Winnipeg is we're going to start um, organizing public forums. Um, Canada Post supposedly went across the country in the last year, year and a half, and they said they visited 44, 44 communities and had public forums. Well, their public forums were by invite only, and they were not advertised in the public domain until after the forum had already happened. What's the mood like among postal workers, and what's the best thing members of other unions and the public can do to defend and fight for Canada Post as a public service? and show postal workers that they have real support for a fight back? Well, the one thing that we were, um, uh, the one thing we were doing here is getting the window signs in the people's windows in their houses because, um, as you can understand, postal workers are pretty, um, they're pretty beaten down, especially in Winnipeg right now. We've had minus 50 temperatures for three weeks now, it's, uh, and the snow, it just, no, like it'll be minus 50 and then it'll warm up to minus 10 and snow a foot. So um, that, on top of getting an announcement through the media and not even from your boss about the ending of door-to-door -door delivery two weeks before or a week before Christmas, really kicked a lot of postal workers down. But what I noticed on the Saturday action was, as I organized the Saturday action, um, we called 70 postal workers and 30 of them showed up. Um, that's 50% of the ones that we called came out and wanted to help. That is an amazing number um, for for us. We, we purposely did a small size, small lot for this time because we wanted to test out how we're going to do this, right? We didn't want to go big too fast and then make it a failure. So, um, what so, and another thing I saw from that is we only went out and delivered for two hours and came back and three quarters of the people stayed to have a drink and eat, uh, have something to eat with their fellow workers. And um, that social atmosphere, having them together and actually 
just sitting and listening to the conversations. And people felt good about what they did that day, and it it made them feel that they can make a difference. Because um, um, just sitting back and doing nothing, you know, you're never going to win, right? So it was really, really uh, heartening to hear the conversations people and how, how much they took pride in what they actually did. As opposed to the other parts of the labor movement and the public, um, what you could do is, I think it's probably pretty safe to say, if you find the phone number of your CUPW local in your town, call them, or go into a post office and talk to a worker and get the number and ask them what, what you can do to help them. Because um, he different locals will be planning different events in different cities. So um, it, it, it's great to hear from hear the support on the phone or to walk up to a postal worker and say there's some you support them. And if you want to do anything, that would be probably where Ground Zero will be for a fight back in any town is at the, at the UP local. So. Any last thoughts? I think that we can can win, we can win this fight. Um, the conservative government uh, has just shown their true colors by um, announcing this, having this announced by Canada Post the day after Parliament broke, a Parliament that they paroled in the first place. All I would have to say is, yeah, we're coming for Stephen Harper and uh, better be ready for postal workers because well, really sure wasn't. <laughs> that was Arlen Doran, a postal worker who helped initiate the local campaign in Winnipeg to defend Canada Post from the service cuts, cost increases, layoffs, and privatization. For materials to put in your window or on your mailbox, as well as more information on what's happening, check out the Postal Workers Union website, cupw.ca, and support postalworkers.wordpress.com. And you can always go to rankandfile.ca for more coverage. This is Doug Nesbitt for rankandfile.ca signing off.